Oh yeah, it's that time again. Time to spotlight some more movies made in everyone's favorite 51st state, Canada. And this time, I'm gonna do a few movies that people might have actually heard of. First though, it's about time I talked about Canada's proud tradition of giant killer rat movies. Deadly Eyes is a 1982 Canadian horror movie that also falls into the category of rodent exploitation. In fact, between this and movies like Of Unknown Origin and Food of the Gods 2, Canada really had a thing for making giant killer rat movies in the 80s. So what makes this one so special? Well, for starters, it was made by the director of Enter the Dragon. Yeah, director Robert Klaus is best known for making both Enter the Dragon as well as Game of Death, which has the distinction of being both a real Bruce Lee film and a Bruce Bloitation movie at the same time. Why he decided to make a giant rat movie in Canada, I have no idea, but I'm still curious to see if he tried to sneak some Bruce Lee footage in here. Oh, and the movie's also based off a book, which means it's guaranteed to be at least in the same league as Carnosaur and Slugs. So, with the backstory out of the way, let's dive into Deadly Eyes. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant Night Eyes. Come on, I thought it was doing Canadian exploitation movies, not Italian ones. What's with the alternate titles? Anyway, you can't watch a movie about giant rats without learning a few rat facts first. There are 24 rats for every man, woman, and child alive today. In our country alone, they will destroy over one billion dollars worth of property annually. Yeah, thanks, but I don't think the students are paying attention. They're only taking Vermin 101 because it's an easy credit. All right, class, remember, if your parents ask, our field trip today was to the planetarium and not to hear a lecture on rats, okay? Our main character is Paul Harris, a recently divorced high school teacher who in his free time is also the Canadian fourth doctor. And I think somebody might be hot for teacher. Gotta make him forget he's a teacher by reminding him that he's a man. Then something they call animal magnetism is supposed to take over. She's not actually attracted to him, she just really wants him to get fired for fucking one of his students. Ah, looks like it's a lovely summer day in Canada. Oops, I meant America, because that's totally where this movie takes place. It's important they put that flag there, though, because just like in Black Christmas, if this movie took place in Canada and not America, it would have literally no impact on the rest of the movie. Oh well, back to the jailbait plotline. I thought that that was a fascinating lecture, Mr. Harris. I mean, don't you sometimes feel that there's an animal inside you just waiting for a chance to escape? Well, I suppose we all feel like that sometimes. Ooh, shot down. And you can't date your teacher, you're already going out with surfer Davy Crockett here. In case the school field trip plotline doesn't interest you, we now get to see a health inspector perform her job. I'm gonna have to condemn all of this corn. It's infested with rodents. It's all gonna have to be destroyed. Destroyed? Oh, but come on, the rat poop just adds protein. Miss Leonard, I've got a lot of money tied up in this inventory. I could make it worth your while if you give us a break. I don't think offering to sleep with her is gonna fix your problem, pal. And forget about rats, this place's real problem is that it's infested with angry Jim Henson mutants. Scatman Crothers better hurry up and finish inspecting this place. He still needs to try and rescue Danny Torrance. Uh, meanwhile, in a Canadian slasher movie... Jeez, did Billy from Black Christmas move from the attic to the basement? Well, never mind that. Time to meet more of our characters. Hey, when you miss your parents are gonna be back! By okay, if this guy doesn't die by the end of the movie, I'm gonna be pissed. You can really tell this is America and not Canada, because they're drinking Miller instead of Molson. And if you were wondering what people did for fun in 1982... Hello, I'm Paul Harris, and I'm sorry I missed your call. Is that a voice to die for or what? Fun fact, before the internet, people had to masturbate to answering machine messages. And I think it's a little irresponsible to be throwing a party when you've got a baby to take care of. Let's see if Caroline can buy herself, okay? Well, big sister, make sure her friends don't completely destroy mommy and daddy's house. <laughs> Even the movie had to remind people that that's her sister and not her mom. Well, I did my job. Time for a joint. I'm stoned. Well, then it's time for a burger run. I gotta stay here with Caroline. Come on, she'll survive. Yeah, even though it's rated R, they wouldn't actually kill a baby in this movie, right? Oh my god. Caroline? Oh right, it's an 80s exploitation movie. That baby is so dead. 
Oh man, the rats even killed her sister mom. Fun fact, in Canada, if you can't go ice fishing, just go garbage fishing. One of these days you're gonna get that pretty little ass of yours nailed to the wall. And one day you're gonna get sued for sexual harassment, Chief. This is our other main character, Kelly Leonard, who's the health inspector from earlier. Her boss is a little upset with her, probably because she forgot to mention in her report that the rats she found infesting the corn were of the giant bitey variety. Here's what happened. Kinda had an accident. Something bit me. Oh, man. All right, walk it off. And look alive, ladies. You're never going to become cheerleaders for the Warriors with moves like that. You know, I can see why this girl is attracted to Mr. Harris. He really knows how to rock a pair of booty shorts. Or maybe she just loves a guy who's into rats. Mr. Harris? I think I'm falling in love with you. Trudy, I'm flattered, but I'm not entirely sure you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'm in my 40s, you're 17 going on 25. This is not going to work. Sometimes when you want someone very badly and you can't have them, you want them even more, but that's not love. What do you call it then? A crush? Can't that turn into love? Yeah, that or a 90s thriller. Besides, you can't have an affair with one of your students. You need to visit the guy who got bit earlier so you can have your meet cute with health inspector lady. How you doing? I'm Paul Harris. Hi, Kelly Leonard. Nice to meet you. Kelly's from the health department. She's trying to answer that burning question. Just what bit David Hoser? Okay, relax, kid. She's just here to make sure you don't turn into a wolf cop. And I got my own theory as to what's been going around biting people. <laughs> Holy shit, killer squirrels! You picked a bad night to walk home, old man. We already killed a baby in this movie. There's no way your ass is surviving. <laughs> See? Told you. All the free healthcare in the world isn't gonna help you now. By the way, showing a picture of Mickey Mouse in your giant killer rat movie? Better hope Disney doesn't see this. It's getting bad and dangerous and ugly down there, Kelly. Would you believe the other day I saw a rat this big? Wait, if you know about the giant rats, then you should probably tell some people. I gotta give this movie credit. Not many giant rat movies also double as rom-coms about single fathers. Hope you're not stopping on my account. No. No, we reached the end of the line, thank God. Can I go and play hide and seek? All right. But don't go too far. They'll kill anyone in this movie, son. Having a kid play near a dark sewer opening may seem scary, but back then, kids could play in toxic waste and their parents didn't give a shit. Besides, Stranger Danger didn't mention anything about avoiding weird-looking rat puppets. All right, Scatman, remember, your credit in the movie only said special appearance by, so the sooner you get killed, the sooner you can collect your paycheck and go home. <laughs> You've heard of the running of the bulls? Well, in Canada, we have the running of the rats. While the close-ups of the rats were done with puppets, for shots of the rats running, they used wiener dogs dressed in rat costumes. And the fact that this movie must have had a wiener dog wardrobe department kind of makes me smile. Oh, and if you thought I was joking about Scatman Crothers just wanting to collect his paycheck, just take a look at his death scene. <laughs> Oh well, guess I'm dead. Can I go home now? And giant rats aren't the only thing to be afraid of in this movie. No, pal. You also have to worry about fake-out scares. Jeez, forget the rats. I'm scared Kelly's dolls are gonna come to life and kill her in her sleep. And if you were thinking this movie hasn't spent enough time on Paul so far... Let's see. Preheat oven to 400 degrees. 400. Hold back foil to expose dessert. No one will be seated during the thrilling TV dinner scene. Thank God Kelly gives him a call. I was worried we'd have to watch him cook that thing in real time. Hi, Paul. It's Kelly Leonard calling. I was wondering if you might have dinner with me tonight if you're not doing anything else. Oh man, I already put the TV dinner in. You know, I'm glad Paul's found somebody that won't end up getting him Mary Kay Letourneau'd. And she even puts out on the first date. Unfortunately, even though Kelly's a health inspector, she doesn't have the heart to tell Paul that his genitals aren't up to code and need to be condemned. After making sweet love on Paul's area rug, Kelly gets a call that Scatman Crothers has been found dead. We won't have positive ID till the autopsy, but it's definitely Foskins. What was the cause of death? Well, either he was eaten by rats or Jack Nicholson hit him with an axe. This is pretty shocking news, but I know one thing that'll fix it. Muffins. I just keep thinking about something that George said the other day. He told me that he had seen this 
colony of rats that were bigger than normal. Okay, again, he already knew about the giant killer rats and he still went down there anyway? Dude, at that point, who cares what your boss says? Just quit and look for another job. So, what's the explanation for the giant rats gonna be in this movie? Toxic waste? Radiation? Do you think it's possible that this steroid feed could have spawned a... A new strain of rat? Ah, so the rats are killing people because they've got roid rage, huh? Okay, having steroids be the reason the rats are so big may sound a little ridiculous, but in this movie's defense, have you seen Lou Ferrigno? Now that they know there's a rat infestation, there's only one way to deal with it. Call the fire department? Alright everybody, first we'll set the mood with a little dry ice, and then we'll start killing the rats. Okay, looks like they got the rats taken care of, so... Does this mean the movie's over? I'm supposed to go to the opening of the subways for tonight. I thought maybe because Timmy's so interested in trains, the two of you might like to come along? You just learned there's killer rats underground and you want to go to a subway opening? Well, I see nothing wrong with that idea. First, though, she's going to have to clear it with her boss, who doesn't seem too happy with her. What happened what? I don't care what happened! How are we supposed to keep business here when you circulate reports making a heart attack sound like something out of, uh, the Twilight Zone? Mmm, given all the monster puppets in this movie, I'd say it's more like the Outer Limits. Boy, this infestation is even worse than I thought. By the looks of it, the rats have discovered how to use wire cutters. That'll have to wait, though, because this movie isn't about rats. It's about the pitfalls of being a single father. All right, pal, into the shower. I want to watch cartoons. I don't like you sitting there watching television all the time. Yeah, don't worry. Pretty soon we'll get an Atari and we'll just play with that. And whatever happened to that high school girl that wanted to jump Paul's bones earlier? What the hell are you doing here? I figured if I couldn't have you, I'd try your son. You didn't come home last night. What the hell business is that of yours? Now get out of here. But Paul, I love you. Shit, I was just kidding earlier, but maybe this really is the crush. Either that or an episode of Three's Company with the misunderstanding that's about to happen. Paul? I can see why you didn't want to be disturbed. I didn't know you were here. Obviously. Look, Paul, make the best of an awkward situation and see if you can finagle a threesome out of this. No such luck, though. Kelly decides to show up Paul for being with a younger woman by going out on a date with his son. Wait a second! Well, I tried. Now it's my turn to watch cartoons. Paul gets a message from Mr. Rat Expert informing him that the rats have moved into the subway lines. Although you would think somebody who knows so much about rats would also know to stay the hell away from where the rats would be. <laughs> Oh man, I knew I should have gotten a PhD in something cuter. Well, you know what they say, Doc. You live by the rat, you die by the rat. And since this is a giant killer animal movie, it's about time we got our version of the mayor from Jaws. I, uh, don't have to tell you what this subway extension means to the people of the city. Yes, this city, which I'm not going to name, but I can assure you is in America and not Canada. Well, congrats on opening the new subway. Now let's all get drunk on Kool-Aid. And you're right, movie, I do need to do another Bruceploitation movie. I mentioned that this girl had a boyfriend earlier, but he's probably still mad that she tried to dump him for their teacher. Man, I'm sorry. All right, never mind, I guess they're fine. Wait, we're in a bowling alley now? Come on, movie, are you doing the finale to The Blob or Beware the Blob? Pick one. Unfortunately for this kid, there's no sorority babes in this slimeball bowlerama. Just rats. <laughs> Damn, and that kid was just two days from getting his employee discount on snacks. And see, I told you the director would put some Bruce Lee footage in this movie. And in addition to killing people, the rats also cock-block this guy. Ooh, sorry pal, looks like you won't be getting to second base with that hand tonight. Or ever again. You see everybody, this is why you don't leave your garbage on the floor of a movie theater. It attracts pests. God damn, people haven't fled from a movie theater this fast since Battlefield Earth's opening weekend. Well, better call the authorities. Now, now, even though this movie's Canadian, they still couldn't afford to get Leslie Nielsen. While this is going on, the rats stop the mayor's subway car by cutting the power. What do you mean, they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're animals! Want... If you will please exit through the doors at this end of the car, oh, oh. friends and authority personnel will be there to escort you to State Street Station. Don't you mean Province Street Station? 
They better be careful going down this subway tunnel, otherwise they might run into another Canucksploitation movie. Hopefully Paul gets there quick and saves him from the rats. Sorry sir, this is a private party, the station isn't open to the public yet. Hey, no need to explain the situation, Paul. Just punch the cop out and steal his gun. I'm sure that'll go over well. Just kidding, he actually shoots a rat, but he's still not explaining shit to that cop. Paul doesn't need anybody's help to save people. Get back in the train, it's not safe here! Okay, on second thought, screw going back to the train. Let's go this way instead. If the whole subway thing didn't kill the mayor's chances for re-election, his failure to increase the city's pest control budget definitely would've. That and the fact that he's a cowardly piece of shit who locks everybody out of the train but himself. Don't worry though, this just means that his inevitable death at the end of the movie is gonna be extra bad. Man, looks like the rats are really roid raging now. I think they're just angry they haven't been able to get a decent pump on today. And also, they're apparently filled with springs. Jeez, nice job running into a dead end, Paul. We'll be all right. No, you won't, kid. We killed a baby at the beginning, and you're next, fucker. Eventually, Paul runs out of bullets, and because he doesn't have any dog-sized rat traps on hand, he's forced to think of another way to take care of the rats. And after playing a bit of live-action Donkey Kong, they realize barrels marked flammable can be used for something else in a video game. All right, time to roast some weenie dogs. <laughs> Fire. The rat's one weakness. They're all dead. Nothing could have made it through that explosion. Uh, did you take a head count? How the hell do you know they were all in there? Huh, well, looks like everything worked out okay, but I just realized we haven't seen the mayor die yet. <laughs> Look, there's a very simple solution to all of this. You just need to feed some cats the steroid corn, and boom, rat problem solved. While it wasn't exactly a hit at the box office, Deadly Eyes did manage to find a home on late night cable TV shortly after its release. And honestly, that's probably the best place for a movie like this. As you may expect, it also wasn't exactly loved by critics, and James Herbert, the author of the novel the movie was based on, called it, quote, terrible, absolute rubbish. Okay, I guess he was expecting this to be the Citizen Kane of giant rat movies. This definitely isn't a great movie, and it's not up there with something like Willard or of Unknown Origin, but as far as giant rat movies go, eh, there's worse ones out there. One thing that surprised me is that the main characters are surprisingly well-developed for this type of movie. In fact, if anything, the movie spends a little too much time on the characters and their relationships at the expense of the giant rat killing. When they do show the rats, though, things are appropriately bloody and sleazy, even if the effects never look like anything except what they are, namely dogs and rat costumes and puppets. But hey, at least they didn't make a movie about a giant insect and then call it Blue Monkey. So, points for having a less misleading title. Well, that's the end of part one, but I still got three more movies to go. And if you thought this one was weird, just wait till you see what I got coming up. Until next time.